This cable is a shielded cable. Shielded by that I mean it's shielded with aluminum foil as you see here. This is a six connector meaning six wire. The computer cable store number for this cable is RS-232 shielded six conductor. I recommend using this shielded cable because you won't have to worry about any outside interference from other signals. This cable also has a ground wire which you don't necessarily have to use. Should you decide to use this ground wire, always twist your ground wires together wherever you have these cables. If you have more than one cable on an RCA connector, connect these ground wires together, tape them out of the way. The individual wires in this cable are 22 gauge. The red arrow shows the aluminum foil covering. You can just tear that off. The blue arrow shows the ground wire. This is the RCA plate. Install your RCA plates with either color at the top. It doesn't matter. But you do need to install them all the same so in case the plate is behind a TV where you can't see, then you'll know without looking at the colors where to plug your wires in. Shown here are the components of the plate. The long screws at the top right retain the RCA connectors, shown just to the left, retain that to the box, and the very small screws at the bottom retain the cover plate, shown at the far left, to the assembly. When this is all wired, this shows a photo of the RCA assembly on the box which is retained by the two long screws which are shown in this photo here. A couple of drops of WD-40 on these screws make them a lot easier to install. When all the wiring is finished then the cover plate goes on the whole assembly. These tabs shown by the red arrows are what keeps the box from going all the way into the wall. They're the retaining tabs. If you make a mistake, this is probably where you're going to make it. Don't cut the hole large enough for these retaining tabs to go through. If you do, you'll have to repair the sheetrock and pick another spot for your box. Once these four lines are made on the wall, you'll want to connect these lines using a ruler with the box out of the way. You see the four corners that must stay outside the wall, and you also see the red arrows where the screws are. Those are the screws for the little wings that protrude out to catch the wall. Now maybe I'm going a little bit too far in the explanation of this, but I don't want you to make a mistake. Your cutout lines should be drawn from A to B, from C to D, from G to H, and E to F. This photo, of course, shows the box already in the wall. Okay, line your box up where you'd like to have it. And you may want to use a level to make your first line to make sure that it's straight, depending on your line of sight, how good you are at that. Make your first two pencil marks between the two retaining tabs in the area shown by the red arrows after you're sure that the box is straight. If you're using a hacksaw blade, you will need to drill a hole shown here within the lines at the top of the box so you'll have a starting point for your blade. Disregard this step if you're going to use the drywall saw shown in the photo previously. If you will gently push and slightly twist the drywall saw where the X's are marked here, you'll be able to start your first cut. The saw has punctured through the sheetrock and now I'm starting to cut all the way across to one side, then I'll do the other side. And this shows my first cut. If you will pre-adjust this screw on the little flip-out wing that retains the box to the wall, if you'll pre-adjust that to half inch or three-eighths, those are the two most common sizes of drywall, Pre-adjusting this will save you a little bit of time once the box is in the wall. Also put a couple of drops of WD-40 on both of these retaining screws. Adjust the flip-out wing shown by the blue arrow. Adjust that to a little bit more than the width of your drywall. 
the width being between the two red arrows. After you've installed the wire in the walls where you need it, leave about two feet hanging out each opening for the RCA plate. Carefully cut and remove the gray outer covering on this cable. Tear away the tin foil, leaving only what you see here in this photo. Strip each wire back about a quarter of an inch. You may want to practice doing this on a piece of scrap wire because it's very easy to cut too much of the wire away when you try to strip the outer covering. Shown here is the cutout for your box. You might want to go around the edges with a razor blade and clean up some of these rough places where the paper's torn. There are tabs at the rear of the box for the wires to go through. Just open those up slightly, one or two, whatever you need. This opening ready for a box is shown in my basement. This is what I'll call the end of the run. This is the last box I'm installing. Here is where you're very likely to make another mistake. Always make sure you put your box on this wire, the wire coming through the box before you solder your RCA connector plate in place. If you don't, you're going to have to desolder it and then put your box on and do it all over again. Test fit your box in the wall. If it fits good, pull it out, slip your wire through one of the holes in the back of the box, and stick it back in the wall. If you could see behind the wall, this is what you'd see with the retaining tab swung out. Another view behind the wall. You can bend this outer connector shown here by the blue arrow. You can move that down to where it looks like the two above it, so it'll make it easier for you to get your wires on and to solder it. After the wire is stripped, insert the wire through the little hole in the contact and fold it back to get it ready for soldering. You will be using two wires here for each connector that you see here in this photo, one to the center, one to the outside. Be sure and mark these colors down so you can do each and every box the same way, wire it the same way. Use your soldering iron or gun just long enough to melt the solder. You can melt the little plastic insulators in these connectors if you're not careful. I like to start from either end and do two wires at a time. Here all wires have been soldered. Just be sure to put your wire through the box first. And here is the finished product. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope it's been helpful to you. You may want to Look at a book about construction and how walls are constructed before you start drilling for your wires. That is going to be by far the hardest thing to do is running your wires. It doesn't necessarily take special tools. You can use coat hangers and flashlights and mirrors and you can accomplish it that way. Be careful in your attic. Be sure not to step through the ceiling or accidentally drill through the ceiling somewhere. Take your time. Take measurements, be precise, be sure in what you do. See ya!